exercise induced asthma, what is it? How might you be able to prevent it? It's very, very common. So between 20 and 50% of athletes will experience exercise induced asthma. And basically the, the main reason for causing the airways to narrow is hyperventilation. And what is hyperventilation? Hyperventilation is when your breathing is faster and harder. And of course, most people run with their mouth open. So they're taking cold, dry, unfiltered air directly into their lungs. Now, if you think of our breathing during rest, while we're sitting, so while we are resting, and we look at the respiratory rate multiplied by the tidal volume to give us minute ventilation, the respiratory rate normally is about 12 to 14 breaths per minute. Tidal volume, which is the volume of air drawn into your lungs, in around half a litre or so. So this gives us about 6 to 8 litres per minute. Now when you do physical exercise, this is going to ramp up very considerably, depending of course on the intensity and duration of physical exercise, and also depending on your breathing pattern. So you could have, you know, doing high intensity exercise, the respiratory rate could increase to 50 breaths per minute, your tidal volume could be increasing to 2 litres plus, and this is giving you 100 litres of air per minute. So during rest we breathe 6 to 8 litres. During intense physical exercise, 100 litres plus. And an Olympic class athlete could be breathing 200 litres per minute. A lot of work for the lungs to do. And it's all of this work by, for the, it's all of this work by the lungs which can cause the airways to narrow. So when we think about, you have, you know, well, that's not a great idea. One second. So when you think about the nose and your nasal cavity, hard palate, your soft palate, your throat, your trachea, and your bronchi. And then we have, of course, the lungs, and we have the diaphragm breathing muscle here. So if we're taking in 50 breaths per minute, and if you're taking them in through the, the nose, well, automatically nose breathing is going to reduce the respiratory rate. So if, you, for example, you're breathing 50 breaths per minute with mouth breathing, probably this is going to reduce down to about 40 breaths per minute um, with nose breathing. And even looking at Dallam's paper, that was pretty much what, what he had noticed. So if you're taking 50 breaths per minute, cold, dry, unfiltered air coming into the lungs. This in turn is causing the airways to dry out. This in turn is causing the airways to cool. There can be too great a loss of carbon dioxide. And basically this then is going to feed into the airways narrowing. So we're talking about the airways narrowing, we're talking about the bronchioli. So these little branches here which subdivide and get progressively smaller and then they run into small little air sacs. See, we want to make sure that these airways are staying open. But a good airway might look like something like this. And it's very easy for air to move freely. And that's what you want. You don't want any impediment to the air that's coming in through your nose. Well, of course, ideally it's through your nose, but most people it's through their mouth. But during physical exercise, breathing through the nose and allowing that airway. During physical exercise, the objective would be to breathe in and out through your nose and allowing that air to be moving freely so that it can reach the small little air sacs because, of course, this is where oxygen will transfer from the lungs into the blood. And excess carbon dioxide then is breathed back out into the atmosphere. So a good airway is pretty open, you know, it's dilated. Now, if the airways are cooling and drying and there's a loss of carbon dioxide and, of course, the nose is bypassed because most people breathe through their mouth during exercise, so they're not getting the benefits of nasal nitric oxide. Their airways can narrow. And basically airways narrow due to a combination of smooth muscle constriction, inflammation of the inner walls of the airways, and increased amounts of mucus. And this then can manifest as breathlessness, coughing, wheezing, chest tightness, and some people might just feel that their breathing is off. They're feeling, you know, a rawness. Um, in terms of breathing. 
Now, how do, can we help avoid this? Well, we have to think of the nose as the only organ in the human body that prepares the air before it comes into the lungs. Doing your best to nasal breathe is absolutely key. Now, earlier on, I said it's hyperventilation, which is implicated in causing exercise and juice bronchoconstriction, which is affecting 20 to 50% of athletes. And we're talking about all ranges and all ages. You don't necessarily have to be a solid professional athlete. It could be recreational as well. Hyperventilation and how you breathe during your physical exercise is going to be influenced by how you breathe in your normal every day. So we need to measure both score. And the objective is that the bolt score is greater than 25 seconds because when your bolt score is greater than 25 seconds, there's a considerably reduced risk of the airways narrowing. So if you want to help reduce the risk of exercise-induced bronchoconstriction, think of your breathing in your everyday and work to improve your bolt score. And that's practicing breathing exercises and the whole emphasis of the oxygen advantage is improving your everyday breathing patterns, your breathing during rest, and your breathing during physical exercise. The second aspect to help avoid exercise-induced bronchoconstriction is to do a decent warm-up. We're talking about a warm-up for about 15 minutes. But that warm-up should be in and out through your nose. So when you think about a warm-up, a warm-up isn't just preparation for the muscles, but a warm-up should be preparation for the airways. Because if you think of it, the, the work required by the airways is going to go from about 6 to 8 litres during rest, assuming that your breathing is normal, to quite significant. And if you're doing maximum exercise, 100 litres plus. So you're going from 8 litres to 100 litres. How do we prepare the lungs to be able to cope with that? And this is where a warm-up is key. We have to go easy for the first 15 minutes. The warm-up should incorporate nasal breathing, well, sure, the warm-up anyway should be at a light enough intensity at which you can sustain nasal breathing. Breathing in and out through your nose, breathing slow, and breathing low. But then bringing in some breath holes. So as you're doing your warm-up, you want to use some breath holes to help open up the airways. 10 or 15 minutes, say 10 minutes into your warm-up, breathe in, breathe out, and hold your breath. And hold your breath for 10 to 15 paces. And you're continuously moving, and... Um, after about a half a minute of normal breathing to a minute, do it again. And do it at four or five times, and that will help open up your airways. The more then you do your physical exercise with your mouth closed, the more your nose is going to warm, moisten, filter, harness nasal nitric oxide, keep carbon dioxide more normal, and that's going to help keep the airways open. In other words, what's the real contributory factor to exercise-induced breathing? In other words, what's the real contributory factor to exercise-induced bronchoconstriction? Mouth breathing, harder breathing, and faster breathing. So if we want to help open up the airways. If you want to reduce the risk of having issues with your lungs post-physical exercise, think about your breathing patterns every day. Get your bolt score above 20 seconds, 25 seconds, and definitely bring in breathing exercises into your warm-up protocol. And you will find that that can significantly make a difference to your exercise-induced bronchoconstriction.